Hey guys, Chris Fix here. Today I'm going to show you one of the most common problems anybody who owns a car will face, and that's when you go to start your car. It just won't start. Now I think you could hear that my battery definitely sounds low. I'm going to do it one more time. I want you to listen. Now this could be a few different things. I'm going to go through the steps that I would normally take to try to figure out what the problem is given what you just saw. So that you could get a little bit of background information, when I go to start the car, well now it won't even crank, but when I went to start the car, it was cranking. So you know that the starter's engaging, you know that the engine's spinning. I drove this car last night, it's been parked in my driveway, and the battery went dead. While I was driving, I did not see any battery light come on. If you see a battery light come on, it could be your battery or it could be your alternator that's not charging. I didn't see any battery light come on. This was an overnight thing. The car won't start now. It got down to 30 degrees Fahrenheit last night and batteries don't like the cold. So it's making me think that it is a battery problem. Also, if you look at the clock, right now it's not 12 o'clock. It's 2.30. On most cars, when you lose battery power, your clock will reset to 12 o'clock. So we know we lost battery power. Now what I'm going to do with the car in the run position, I'm going to turn the headlights on, and you can see, I shut the headlights, turn it on. The dimming of the lights and the beeping are all indicators that we have a dying battery. These are all just little tests that you could do before you whip out a multimeter, before you go take it somewhere, just to kind of get some information on what's going on. So let's go check out the battery and see what's up. At this point, I want you to think about the situation and take a guess to see what you think the problem is based on everything that we've gone through so far. So let's go take a look at our battery and just see if there's anything that stands out. This battery is seven years old. That's something good to note. Batteries last on average four years. So this is almost double the lifespan of the battery. If we look at the negative ground, you can see it looks pretty clean. There's some crystallization right down there. So I might have to clean the negative battery terminal. You'd be surprised sometimes with the negative battery terminal dirty. That's the reason why your car won't start and the reason why you won't get power to headlights and stuff. So that's definitely something to consider. And then the positive terminal, that looks pretty good. It could use some cleaning too, but there's nothing there that really makes me think that's the positive battery terminal. It looks pretty normal. If you don't know how old your battery is, there should be a sticker either on top of the battery or on the side. So here's where the date would be. You know, you can see here's the months, here's the years. In my case, you see none of them are marked off, so the person who installed this battery didn't say when the battery was purchased and installed. Normally, you would have a marker, or in this case, I think these peel off. So you, let's just say in April of 2005, you bought this battery and had it installed. So the April mark and then the number five mark will be marked off. I think this one has a three-year warranty. Yeah, it says three-year warranty, and then sometimes they're prorated after that, so you get some money back if it's like five years and it goes bad. Either way, you get the idea. That's how you check to see when your battery was purchased and installed, and that could help you figure out if you think it might be the battery. Like I said, seven years is a long time for a battery. I'm pretty sure it is the battery because of that. So when we went to go start the engine, it did turn over. It turned over very slowly. It didn't sound right. It sounded like it was really lugging. It, it was having a hard time, and that's typical of a bad battery. So without any equipment, just listening to things, just doing some diagnostic stuff, checking the clock on the radio, listening to hear the engine turning over, making sure everything's actually engaging, hearing that the starter sounds like it's going slow. Just by hearing stuff like that, we don't even need to use a multimeter or any special equipment to get an idea of what the problem is. Now, if you don't have a multimeter, the next thing you could do is just jump start your car battery, charge it up, whatever you need to do to get charge into this, and start your car. And then go over to your local auto parts store. They'll check your battery for free and they'll actually put a load on it and they'll tell you if the battery's bad and then they could also check your alternator for free to tell you if the alternator is what's causing the battery problem. There is a slight chance that you could have a draw, a parasitic draw, which means something is using battery power while the engine's off and it's using too much battery power so overnight your car goes dead but I don't think that's the situation here. But since I do own a multimeter, I have it set to 20 DC volts. I'm going to turn it on. Good. I have my two leads here. You can see here, it's at zero volts, so I'm going to go black to black, red to red, 10 volts. That should be 12.6, or anywhere around 12.6. So this just further confirms that our battery is most likely the culprit. When you're testing with the multimeter, you want to make sure that your prong here is 
on this battery head and it's nice and clean. You want a good connection. If this is all dirty and greasy and you put this on there, you might not get any voltage or you might have weak voltage. So you can see the top of my battery post is very clean. I have a good connection and that goes for the black negative side and for the red positive side. Both are clean and ready to go. So obviously this doesn't cover everything. I could go 20 minutes about this. I'm pretty sure it's a bad battery. I'm gonna go jump this and I'm gonna go take a ride to the store and then we're gonna see how they actually test the battery and they'll confirm if it's a bad battery or not. They do it all for free, it's just worth it. So let's go see what they tell us. Now because the car started up when I used the battery jumper, you could hear it actually still lagged, but then finally there was enough juice in that jumper to get it started. And because I'm not getting a battery light as the car is running, and I mean I could turn my headlights on, and I still won't get the battery light, I could add the blower motor here, let's turn it up all the way. Still no battery light, the car didn't stall, so I don't think it's an alternator problem, I think it's a bad battery. And again, I'm just going through things that it might be just so that you could get an idea of how to do all these tests without even using a multimeter. You could be on the side of the road with no tools at all and be doing these little simple tests just to check things out. So let's go out, have your local parts store, check the battery, and we'll see how bad this battery actually is. I'm here at the local auto parts store and they're going to test out our battery for me. So it's just going to connect this load tester, put a load on the battery. We're getting a printout of the results. Replace battery. Okay, so just as we thought, we need to replace the battery. The voltage was good, which makes sense because we just ran the car for 15 minutes to get to the store. That was 13 volts. The cold crank amp should have been 850, but it was 315. And then it said the battery failed and it should be replaced. So even though we're going to go inside and they're going to show us what battery that we need, you just want to double check. On the battery somewhere, it will tell you how many cold cranking amps. Right there it says there's 850 cold cranking amps, 1,000 regular amps, and then the size of the battery is 65N. So I just got back from paying, and by the time I even get back, they already have the new battery in, and I'm ready to go. So let's see if she starts up. Starts up like a brand new car. Nice and simple. And that's exactly how I go through troubleshooting a no start condition. In this case, we had a bad battery. But now you got to see how I go through step by step to try to identify where the problem is. Is it with the alternator? Is it with the battery? Is the starter engaging? So hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, remember to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing. And the top tip for this video is grab a marker. Normally on the batteries, you'll have a month and a year. This one doesn't have it and you'll be able to mark off what month and year you purchased the battery because you do get a three year warranty and also batteries last around four years so after four years you might want to get your battery checked with the cold cranking amps like you saw what we did but since this doesn't have a thing to mark it off right here I'll just put January 15 I'll put it up here too so now I know I purchased this battery in January 2015 and this video is going to have two tips. Since we have a brand new battery, we want to keep these posts as rust free as possible. That will give us the best connection in here. Normally, I'd recommend using something like WD-40. Everybody has WD-40. You just spray a little bit on there and you're good to go. But I got something even better. This stuff is called Get Some 1000. It's a spray lubricant. It lasts even longer than WD-40. Just get a little bit on there. Just like that. Get our positive terminal here, spray that down too, and now our terminals are protected and they'll stay clean and corrosion free and you're good to go.